if you spend six hours every day watching television, by the end of one year, you would have spent 2,190 hours watching television. That translates to 91 days watching television, and that translates to three months out of 12, 12 months in a year watching television. Can you even beat that? Now let's look at another picture. Several years down the line, your parents will grow old and possibly die. And you will be regretting why you hadn't spent more time making them happy and learning from them. Your children will grow old and grow out. And you'll be wishing you had spent more time with your children, inculcating values or just enjoying their company. You will grow older and the things that you could have done now, you won't be able to do them again. But guess what? Years down the line, there are going to be better devices, uh, more sophisticated, uh, more interesting programs to watch on television, uh, better social media interaction. And if you reduce your consumption of television, if you reduce the amount of time you spend uh, engaging on social media unproductively, you won't have missed anything several years down the line because these things will always be there. Welcome to another exciting episode with the Psychologist NG uh, on the Psychologist NG TV. If you haven't subscribed already, this is the perfect time to do so. Uh, please click on the subscribe button and enable notifications so that you won't miss out on any of our videos. It's a journey and each week it gets even more interesting. We're learning together, we are growing and maximizing our potentials. I'm sure you want to be a part of this. Also, please click on the share button to share this video and other videos with friends who will learn from them so today we are uh, doing the part two of the screens and us last week we spoke about the screens and how they affect us we focused on blue light today we are spoke focusing on um, other aspects like um, maximizing our screen times actually uh, reducing screen time for those who need to because screens can be addictive we'll talk about that more later and all of this so for the first uh for a start let's see what we gain from our screens why are the screens so attractive we talked about um for uh, television screens and even our phone screens having the potentiality of uh, becoming an addiction even though they are not listed in the diagnostic and statistical manual of mental disorders but i mean experts in the discipline have agreed that uh screen time could be addictive television viewing gaming on your uh, video gaming and uh, uh, PS4 gaming and all that could be addictive. And in fact, I personally uh, watched uh, with some um, colleagues how they have tried to um, help people who had lost their jobs because they were playing video games. So it can be addictive. And these screens are so addictive because all of the colors and all of the sights and sounds coming to our brains from the screens, uh, they are perceived positively by our brains. In fact, our research has shown that um, watching screens actually activate dopamine receptors. Now, these are the same receptors, these are the same neurotransmitter receptors that are activated when you use a substance. Uh, psychoactive substances uh, when you engage in sex and other satisfying um, activity. As a matter of fact, dopamine is a neurotransmitter that communicates with us which activities will be pleasurable and uh, makes us seek out and engage in pleasurable activities. And viewing televisions, viewing and engaging with our screens activate dopamine receptors. No wonder some people are hooked onto their screens for too many hours a day. So what do we gain from the screens? Yes, there's a lot to gain, no doubt. Education, I mean, you can actually learn uh, online. Uh, you can, online schooling, in fact, is the in thing right now. So there's education, there's a lot of information that could be garnered, you know, from your devices. I mean, uh, which we're actually maximizing our, our, our screen times and our device times. Uh, but remember, entertainment can be gotten from screen time, but there's positive and negative entertainment so you can be getting entertainment getting entertained and it's okay to be entertained after you have worked like i said to my children you can wake up early in the morning and you're going to sit down before a, a television screen rest and entertainment comes after hard work so you first of all work and after working you can rest and get entertained like we said there's positive entertainment which is good and then there's a negative side people who are hooked onto their screen uh hours on end watching pornography including 
young adults, teenagers, and children. I mean, including adults as well. And this is not really healthy for us, however we would like to look at it. I mean, that's a subject for another day. So the whole essence of this uh, session today is to help us maximize our screen times, help us use our screen times better for those of us who are engaging too much with our screens to help us uh, take measures to reduce screen time. You know, I carried out a little research in the school and I found out that about 90% of my sample size students, university students, spend over three hours a day watching, tele uh, rather using their, their devices, their telephones on social media. And uh, less than 5% of the population were engaging uh, uh, interacting educatively or constructively with their devices. That's where we are today and that's what we're seeking to change. If you're going to use your devices, maximize your device or your screen time. Okay, so we get education. Another thing we get from screen time is actually um, hiding away from our troubles. It distracts us from our troubles, from our challenges, from our worries and all of that. So when we feel depressed, when we feel down, when we have worries and challenges, it's very easy to hide behind our screens, watching other people live their dreams while we, we refuse to face our challenges. The sad thing about this is, even though this will give us some um, temporary relief, after you have watched your screen, your TV, you've been on social media, Facebook, WhatsApp, and you get off it, your problems won't go away. Your worries won't just slip into oblivion. They'll be waiting for you and eventually you will have to deal with those challenges and worries. So why not we stop hiding behind our television screens, stop hiding, hiding behind our devices, stop using social media as a getaway from our worries. Wake up, face your challenges, deal with your worries, deal with your problems, you'll solve them that way. One of the things we get from um, using our devices, social media, watching television, is uh, increased uh, self-esteem. Some of us have a poor self-esteem. You know, when we go out there on our social media applications, you know, and then we put up a picture, we get instant gratification. You get likes, several likes for posting maybe a, a nude uh, picture of yourself or uh, doing something like that. And you get lots of likes, lots of comments, and that boosts your self-esteem. Most of those likes are not real. Most of those comments are deceptive. They do not convey the real thoughts of those people commenting. But we are carried away by this. We feel better about ourselves and, um, you know, we go on. But what is wrong with, it, with this? What is wrong is that you're building your self-esteem on um, a weak foundation, an inappropriate foundation. And so maybe you do one thing out there and then these likes aren't coming on. Or maybe you make a single mistake and the likes and positive comments turn into condemnation before you know what you're suicidal. I remember a friend of mine who tried to joke about the issue of rape. It was wrong, actually. But, I mean, all of his friends on Facebook came at him at full force. And if he didn't have um, a good self-esteem, a good concept of self, he could have gotten suicidal. But well, there are other negative consequences of engaging in too much screen time or engaging in... Uh, with your devices too much, on too much, uh, being on, on social media too much. The first one is solitary lifestyle, reduction of human to human interaction. So at the end of the day, you have a 3,000 or 3 million fan base out there, but none of those people really genuinely care about you. So when you have difficulties and struggles in life, there's nobody there to come, uh, uh, you know, be with you, spend time with you, make you feel better. Nobody is calling to check up on you. They don't really care. So we shut out human to human interaction. We destroy our relationships. We don't spend the time we spend on our screens. At the time we would have spent building meaningful relationships and working our relationships, we spend it on our screens. And then at the end of the day, when we need someone to care for us, there's no one because we never built any relationships. So blocking out human to human interaction, increase of solitary lifestyle, that is one of the negative consequences. The second one is actually um, deception and falsehood. Social media, even television, is so full of make-believe, deception, and falsehood. And the young adults and teenagers out there do not realize that this is make-believe. This is not real. So they engage with people they've never met. 
These people are painting pictures that they want you to see. They are making you believe they are who they are not. And many people have gotten killed because they built relationships on social media. When they went to meet, this, went on to meet these people physically, some of them were raped and killed, as in the case of a master's student uh, from National State University, a major general's daughter. Can you imagine that? And so many others. So there's a lot of falsehood and deception going on in social media, and we have to thread with care. Otherwise, we become victims. I pray none of you watching this video become a victim. Some people have transacted on social media and they've been duped, you know. Uh, so much uh, 419, as we call it, Yahoo, Yahoo going on. And social media is the major uh, medium. So we have to be careful when we interact on social media. We have to be conscious of the fact that most of what is going on there is make-believe. It's not real. And so you must try to verify. You must tread with caution, actually. So one of it, And then there's this um, competition that comes with uh, social media. There's the social pressure. We are under pressure to conform. We are under pressure to be like the people we see on social media. You know, you see a friend, uh, maybe he's just passing by somewhere and sees a beautiful car and then poses and takes a snapshot in the car and says, my boyfriend just bought me uh, a Bugatti or, you know, uh, a Lamborghini. And you start killing yourself over nothing. That person is just lying to you. After taking that picture, that person is going to take uh, stop an okada, as we call it in Nigeria, and take a ride back to his one-room apartment and sleep in poverty while you're here killing yourself. Oh, when is my boyfriend? My, my, my boyfriend is not buying me a car, uh, and so I need to break up and look for a boyfriend that will buy that. Or you see somebody going nude on social media, and because of the amount of likes that he scoops with the nudity, you are under pressure to go nude as well. So there's a lot of social pressure coming on. In fact, one day I went shopping in the mall, and I saw this beautiful lady. She wasn't so young. That's the, you know, the surprising thing about it. She should have been in her 30s or even in her 40s. And she came into a boutique, tried on a very beautiful designer outfit, and everyone thought she was going to buy this outfit. But then she took a picture, she just got someone, she came with somebody, took several pictures with that outfit, and then she removed it and dumped and walked us a true life story. And immediately it occurred to me, she probably just came to take pictures for social media. And when you see this, you begin to struggle with yourself. Some people get suicidal just because somebody is, appears to be living, you know, appears to be living better off than you, uh, doing better than you, make believe. So there's a lot of social pressure coming up at us from... Uh, uh, social media platforms, we have to be careful. You don't have to conform. You don't have to be one of the pack. Look at the triangle, you know. When you stand at the head of the triangle, you are more visible. You're safer at the top, you know, and the top is just for a select few. So stand out positively. Be yourself. Be your unique self. We are all created to be unique. Don't try to be like any other person. The best you can be is be you. And, and do you, like we'll say. So, yeah, that's it. And then there's another uh, big, big one. Sedentary lifestyle. All the while we are before our screens, all the while we are before our screens, we are seated, watching television for four hours straight, and you're seated. You know, all the while you're browsing your phone and all of that, you'll take a position, most times, poor posture, and you're just, you know, seated there. Now, the human being was built to stand up straight or, or, and do things straight and be so when we are sedentary, sitting down for hours and hours on end, you know, we are harming ourselves. We are harming ourselves. Our cardiovascular system, our circulatory system works better when we are in an upright position and when we are active. And engaging with our screens do not allow for that. So these are the dangers, some of the dangers that come with that sedentary lifestyle, sitting before your television screen for four hours, six hours straight is you're going to become obese. Because of lack of uh, exercise and activity, you're going to become obese. Okay, so obesity is one of them. And then also there's the risk of type two diabetes. Yeah, we've talked about that a lot, but that's just true. And then there's depression and, and anxiety that's gonna come with that lifestyle, that's an inactive lifestyle. And also there's gonna be wasting away of your bum muscles. Your leg and gluteal muscles will waste away Yes, yeah, so you're also going to have shortening of your lip, your hip flexor muscles, okay? And also if you're uh, sitting down and with pop posture, and that's likely going to be the case, except you're using an ergonomical chair or you're using a workstation, you're going to have pop posture and this is going to lead to slip disc, okay? You can see how bad this is. 
You're going to have, also you could have deep vein thrombosis. That's where you have blood clots, blood clots in the veins of your legs. And these blood clots can actually break off and travel to other parts of your body, blocking blood flow and can lead to serious conditions and even death. So we should actually avoid sitting down for long periods. Even though you're working on your computer or you're working on try to find a way of moving around from time to time, breaking off your work to move around from time to time. So how can we ensure that you're maximizing our screen time? To maximize your screen time, the first thing you have to do is to have a purpose, to have goals, both long-term and short-term goals. Because human beings are teleological in nature. We are uh, designed to seek out and pursue a purpose. Without you having a purpose for your life, you can afford to spend several hours just gazing at your screens and you won't even know time is passing. But you, when you have, when you found your purpose and when you have goals, both short-term and long-term goals, you'll be driven to pursue those goals so much so that if your screen time is not in line with your goals, you would not engage. But aside from that, track how much time you spend on entertainment, on interactions um, that are more or less unprofitable and engaging in screen, time, in screen time. Without tracking your screen time, you can't maximize your screen time. And we go to the third one, maximize your screen time. Like we said, there's a lot to learn out there. There's a lot to do if you have a business to promote on social media. Why not? Spend your screen time achieving your dreams, not watching other people live their dreams. So what are your dreams? What are your goals? Spend your screen time achieving them. I mean, there was a time I had a downtime in my life, you know. I mean, if you're having a downtime, if one thing or the other is not going right, you're depressed a little bit, it's not the end of life and you're not the only one. A lot of us pass through these phases and these stages from time to time. Just get up, stop organizing pity parties for yourself, get up and get to work. And it's only through working that you can get past, you know, those difficulties. So I was having a downtime and before you know it, I started engaging in playing um, Garfield Defense, a game, you know, on my phone and I was going on from level one at this time I was at level 43 and I had to stop ask myself even if there's level 1000 and I get to it I mean what do I stand to gain from spending a lot of time playing Garfield defense that was the day I decided I was going to maximize that time so what did I do I deleted or uninstalled Garfield defense and I installed as many French learning applications as I could find on the app stores you know and then i started working at learning french and i did this for about three four five months and i i found out i was really making progress and so i enrolled in a french class three months french class close to christmas and after eight days of attending the class the school closed for christmas by the time they resumed i was too busy i couldn't join them but i kept learning french with my phone and that's how i got to learn to speak french you know so Maximize your screen time. Make sure you're doing something useful. Make sure you're working on your goals. Make sure you're working on uh, your dreams. You're living your dreams on your screen. Next week, we might be answering some questions that my teenage daughter got from her friends. I'm sure it's going to be a really exciting one. You're not going to want to miss this for anything at all. So please uh, check on us again next week, Friday, Saturday. And uh, join us as we do the question and answer sessions. If you have questions that you would like to be answered, please leave them in the comment section otherwise you can go to my instagram handle at the psychologist ng or facebook at the psychologist ng or the psychologist and leave your questions there um, as messages otherwise go to twitter at d psychologist d for dog d psychologist ng and leave your questions and uh we'll try to respond to them i'd like to know what you think i'd like to know how we can impact better uh, so to let me know what you think, leave a comment for me. Uh, if you like the video, uh, do like it actually. Thank you very much. And until we meet again next week, stay safe out there. Bye. <laughs>